Hello everyone, back to you today's second video doing JMA Friday for today's second video. As always, on a Friday, we're having a look at the weather for the month end, which will take us pretty much through um, the whole of March, the first month of spring uh, 2018. Um, so, we've just issued uh, Snow Watch, that's on the Snow Watch uh, page, and uh, there could be some more snow coming up this afternoon and this evening. This time, particularly focus on kind of like the uh, Wales and Midlands, East Anglia. Could get an extra sort of uh, five to ten centimetres, perhaps, in a few of those areas. Um, from quite a slow moving band of snow, it's going to reinvigorate this afternoon and uh, this evening. So, have a look at um, Snow Watch, see what you think. As I say, this is going to cover the next month, and then um, later on this afternoon, we'll have our third video looking at uh, the weather for the next week to ten days in detail, sort of winding down perhaps um, the end of the beast from the because we are beginning to come out of this now. In the far south, we start to get a little bit of dripping. And uh, we're going to find over the weekend into the early part of next week. But a four uh, gradually begins to take place. But it will take a very long time to warm things up over Scotland. Anyway, more on that in today's third and final video update. But we're going to um, have a look now at uh, Japanese CFSB2 models. For the next month, let's see after this brutally cold start to spring whether there is any sign of some proper uh, sort of spring weather on the way in the next month. So we're going to begin by having a look at the uh, JMA. These are the 500 millibar height anomalies broken down into uh, weekly pairs from the North Pole uh, view down. So this is the North Pole of the Northern Hemisphere up here, the middle latitudes of the Northern Hemisphere are uh, around there. Blue is extrapolating to below average heights, which is low pressure. Yellow, orange and red extrapolating to above average heights, which is high pressure. Uh, so the first week period takes us from today, the second through to uh, the 9th of March. We've got a deep trough of below average heights over and to the west of the UK and still quite a strong blocking signal up to the north. So although the jet stream is starting to uh, move back north again. We are beginning to pull the jet stream uh, back north again. Um, don't expect a quick recovery in temperature. I think through next week, we're going to be less cold. Um, at times in the south, maybe even close to average, but for the north particularly, I think we're very close to hang, uh, hanging on, holding on to the cold temperatures through much of next week at a modified sort of level. And there is certainly the possibility that we could bring some cold air back southwards again at times through the course of next week. This is a very strong and intense blocking pattern that we've been in. And it's probably a bit unrealistic to expect this to just go and uh, we'll go off and running into spring. So I suspect we are, at least for the next week to 10 days, we are probably at risk of bringing some more cold air in at a modified level, not to the severity that we've had it, but we are probably at risk of bringing some more colder air in at times over the next sort of week to 10 days. And that's particularly so for the north. Now we go through to uh, week two. This takes us from the 9th through to the 16th of March. And uh, the blocking signal is weakening. It's moving over more towards Canada. We've got below average heights in the Atlantic and also going over into the east of the UK. So it looks unsettled. Again, the jet stream is inching its way back normal. So this is kind of like uh, beginning to recover from, recover from the strong blocking pattern. So this is still unsettled, but it should by now be back to a sort of average uh, type temperatures. Notice above average heights are beginning to build somewhat to our south, though they're still a long way away from us. But I think overall still the signals are there that as we're going further into March, we're beginning to get a recovery from the uh, unusual blocking pattern that we've been in and temperatures should be starting to get back towards sort of where we expect them to be. Uh, by the middle part of March, which I suppose is reasonably mild for the south. And then we go through to weeks three and four. This takes us from the 16th through to the 30th of uh, March. And uh, still looking at the south. Also, I'm going to have quite an unsettled March here, you have to say. Could be um, quite a wettish month. Again, below average heights in the Atlantic through the UK and going 
two hour east above average height strengthening around Spain. We do have a little bit of a, uh, yellow appearing there up to our north as well. So not totally getting rid of the blocking signal uh, but again it's quite weak and I think overall again the jet stream is gradually going further north so by now second half of March we might be starting to go into typical sort of spring weather uh, which is temperatures getting into uh, the low teens Celsius maybe 12 13 degrees still unsettled yes with uh, some rain at times but much more what you'd expect however watch out for this area of yellow just here because this is a two weekly anomaly, it's possible that it might be picking up on a return of the blocking pattern, maybe in week three or week four, which um, might cause some complications to any recovery in the temperature. So overall, March looks like it's going to be uh, a month where we start off, of course, as we are now, very cold and Gradually, it's going to be a slow process, not a quick process, but gradually we should start to come out of that cold weather and inch our way uh, towards spring. By the second half of the month, uh, we may well find ourselves going into typical spring weather. Let's have a look at the tropical and mid-latitude uh, view next. So uh, British Isles is just here in the top right-hand corner of the chart as you're looking at it. Uh, again, this is the 500 bit of our height anomaly for uh, week one, which is the second through to the 9th of March. Below average heights over and to the west of the UK. And it's still a strong, you can't see the pole, but still a strong uh, blocking signal uh, up there. It means that in the week ahead, temperature anomalies are still coming out colder than average. I mean, it's really cold now, and whilst temperatures will gradually start to lift up over the weekend and into next week, it, we will probably come out with a substantially colder than average temperature anomaly uh, for the week ahead. Having a look at the precipitation anomaly, so for the north and west, it's a little bit drier than average. For the south and east, a little bit wetter than average. So still picking up on the fact that we're blocking off the uh, Atlantic Ocean. Then we go through to uh, week uh, two, which is the 9th to the 16th of March. Uh, still looking unsettled. It looks like the jet stream is trying to start to move back uh, northwards again. Temperature anomalies in uh, week two still coming out colder than average even for this week. So the first half of March is looking um, like quite a quite a cold uh, cold first half of March really uh, with quite a significant below average temperature anomaly expected. Not to the same degree as week one, but still below average in uh, week two. And then the precipitation anomaly that's increasing as well as so it's turning more unsettled. So we've got more in the way of rainfall coming along as well. Quite a cold, wet first half to March then. Then we go through to weeks three and four, takes us from the 16th through to the 30th of March. Still looks quite unsettled. What's happening here is that the jet stream is beginning to move back northwards again as heights are starting to rise around Spain and Portugal. So we'd expect this to be a milder two-weekly anomaly. Actually, for Scotland, even now, we're a bit colder than average. But for England and Wales, a very slow recovery in the temperature is beginning to take place. So maybe going a little bit towards average or possibly a little bit above average for these um, final two weeks of the month. And the precipitation anomaly is still coming out above average so overall we're looking at quite quite a cold march especially the first half the recovery in temperature taking place into the second half and a fairly unsettled month as well that's how the jma is uh, picking things up what about cfs v2 so again these are 500 bit of our heights broken down into uh, weekly bit into um week bits the first week bit taking us from the second through to the eighth of uh march very similar to what the um, JMA is showing, with below average heights to the south and southwest of the UK, above average heights up to the north, and we're still placed on the cold side of the jet stream. So recovery in temperature in the week ahead is going to be uh, really slow indeed. In the south and west, it may we may see the temperatures recovering a bit, but it's going to take uh, quite a long time. 
Uh, week 2 is looking like that. This is the 9th through to the 15th of March. Looks unsettled this week. Below average heights over the north and west of uh, the UK and Europe. Um, then we've got a bit of a blocking signal in the uh, northern Atlantic. We've got some ridging down here, but that's not doing much for us. That's bringing spring to the southeast of Europe. But for us, the jet stream is uh, doing something like that. So we're still placed on the cold side of a the jet there. Uh, and with that trough close to us, maybe even some wintry potential there into the second week of uh, March. Then we go through into week three, which is the 16th to 22nd of March. Uh, above average heights to our west-southwest, below average heights up to the northeast. Um, so with the flow with that one, we're probably doing something uh, like that. So it isn't as unsettled and cold as it is in the first half of the month. Even so, probably nothing to get excited about with the temperature because the jet stream is a line northwest to southeast, so quite chilly, um, but a little bit closer to average and becoming drier. And then we go through to week four, and this could be the start of spring. So this is the 23rd through to the 29th of March, with above average heights centering around Spain and France, and also into the central Atlantic. Below average heights are up here, and so with this one, we're pulling the jet stream and the air in in that sort of direction and maybe in pulling the air up from there so that should be a lot milder and uh, that could be don't get totally excited but that could be true spring uh, beginning to commence with temperatures becoming quite pleasantly mild especially so down in the south so it takes a long long time to get there but by week four maybe signs of spring Arriving. These are our temperature anomalies, again broken down into weekly periods. The first weekly period taking us from the 2nd to the 8th of March. We can be cold on average in the week ahead, quite uh, substantially so. Week 2 temperature anomalies are also coming out colder than average from the 9th to the 15th of March. So the JMA and CFSV2 are in agreement that the first half of March is coming out with quite a significant colder than average uh, temperature deviation. Uh, week 3 is still a little bit on the colder of an average side as well. This is the 16th to the 22nd of March, although much less of a degree. Uh, so we're sort of at slightly below average or close to normal. So week three, we begin to see uh, signs of a recovery taking place. And then look at that. We get through to week four, which is the 23rd to 29th of March. And this final week of March gives us a milder, a warmer than average week. That looks quite pleasant. Um, I mean, it's nothing to get that excited about, but after a fairly cold first half to March, it does look as though maybe in the second half of the month, spring will begin to uh, commence. And then we go through to the precipitation anomalies. The uh, week ahead is looking quite wet, actually, especially down to the south and the west of the country with above average precipitation. And there is a bit of wintry potential at the moment. Anyway, in with that. Uh, week two is also looking fairly unsettled, especially focused on England and Wales. Week three, we start to lose a signal but we're going to be average to drier than average side. And then finally, week four. Um, so it's a bit wet and average for the north. I suppose that could spoil things a little bit for this week where it looks like spring was going to commence. For the south, uh, probably nearer to normal. Let's say that that's going to be quite a pleasant week, certainly on the height anomaly. It looked like it could be. And I think by then, we'll be ready for a little bit of spring. So uh, that's how they're looking. They're in um, agreement, actually, for the first half of March. We're facing quite a cold first half of the month and unsettled, too. So maybe risk of more wintry potential, particularly so, I would have thought, for northern parts of the country. The second half of March, that could be when spring starts to set in and uh, we begin to pull out of this um, extended winter. Let's hope so anyway. Right, so that's today's second video done. By the way, if you're waiting for the Gazzard of this um, March month head forecast, I'll be with you tomorrow morning. It'll be the first video here at Gazzard of tomorrow before the weekend forecast. We'll have the March uh, month head forecast. So that's today's second video done. Don't forget to check out Snow Watch, which we released earlier on today. And the third video, final video for today, will be coming up later on this afternoon, having a look at the weather for the next week to 10 days. And we'll be discussing 
and the cold weather that we've had as well, courtesy of the beast from the east. Right, that's all for now. Thanks for watching.